In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at the freeform pen tool, which is the second option in the pen tool dropdown. Now, in the previous lesson, we created this vector shape by defining the path using the pen tool. We filled it with a gradient between yellow and orange, which makes sense because the image that we're using as a reference here is of Garfield, and his colorings are based on blends of yellow and orange. So it's appropriate. Now we're going to use the same sort of style, but instead of using the pen tool, we use the freeform pen tool to define our shape. Firstly, on the options bar, make sure that shape is selected, not path, because we want to create the shape as we work with our path. If we just created a path by itself, it would be abstract. We'd have the path, but it wouldn't be rendering to the image. We'll change our fill to the same gradient as we used with the previous vector image. And we'll reduce the size of our stroke. Now, we'll just start dragging out a shape. Click and drag as you would with the brush or pencil tools just to define a shape. Quick tip, the closer you are zoomed in, the easier this will likely be for you. Okay. So that needs to be cleaned up. And it needs to be brought in front of Garfield. So let's start that again, but this time we're going to turn on the magnetic option. And we're going to get in just as close as we can while keeping the entire yeah, hand on the screen. Now what I've done is I've clicked once and as I'm dragging around this magnetic setting is sort of doing its best to find the edges. You can click yourself to tell it explicitly as well. And it's going to do its best to find the edges image. Okay. So there we have a shape created. But of course, it's not matching the shape of the hand below perfectly, is it? So it needs a, bit, a little bit of work. First, we're going to drop the fill on this graphic. So make sure you just have this layer selected and you drop the fill fill value so you can see what's underneath, basically. Around 50 should be fine. Then we can take our direct selection tool and we can come in with it and move anchor points around and also manipulate the Bezier curves. Holding shift and holding control will give you different options yeah, to further define the shape. Control allows you to move one handle independently of the other, which is something that you will need to do. And points. I'm doing that quite a lot. We can also add an anchor point. So, with the add anchor point tool, which does have its own lesson as well, but we just needed to do it here. So, go back to the direct selection tool, and you can continue 
to refine the shape. holding alt and holding control and peeling these away from each other. Those are just far too sharp for this object. <clears throat> it's not a sharp object. Okay, so that's a lot better. Great. Mostly the same options as the pen tool, the freeform pen tool. The main difference is the magnetic setting, which will try to find the edges of an object, but it's not perfect. So it requires a lot of direction and intelligence on your part.